Hey, good morning, Ruthless Church. Today, I want to talk to you about the mystery of the prosperity God spell. So, here we go. This is the analogy that I want to bring to you in this uh, in this video. So, if you look behind me, you'll see this raggedy tree, looking pretty scraggly. It doesn't have any leaves. Doesn't have any fruit. Doesn't have anything. Now, next to that tree is another tree that's full of leaves and, and has some fruit. How did that happen? That's the question, right? Or well, that's the question I'm asking. So I used to, this is an office park where I, um, I kind of walk sometimes. And um, one day I was just paying attention that they had pairs of trees in every, uh, every little island thing around the parking lot. And I noticed that there was one that was like flourishing like crazy, so much so that the the leaves and everything were almost touching the ground. It was like just full of abundance. It had prosperity like crazy. And next to it, the one like right immediately next to it had a little bit less. So then I noticed that, and I started going around looking at the different um, the different trees, and then I noticed some that were just thriving, and they were next to some that were just in complete poverty. And I said, how is in the world is this possible? And me having the brain that I have, I started looking at it as society and the socioeconomic situations that we see in the world. And I started thinking, I said, but now the crazy thing is they're planted right next to each other. And so I started trying to factor in what could have contributed to the demise of one plant while the other one was flourishing. So then I noticed that there was a light pole in between quite a few of them. And so I thought that might be it. But then I noticed that there were some that didn't have light poles, so I said, okay, well, it's not that. So then I started thinking about, well, what do plants need that in order to grow, which is obviously light um, and sun, or well, actually that's the light part. So sun, um, water, and good soil with nutrients. So we knew that they both had pretty much the same soil, and I assumed that they generally had about the same amount of water um, given there, you know, there might be a little bit of incline, so the trees that are a little higher up might have a little bit more water, but generally speaking, they have the same amount of water. So then I started thinking that it might be the sun that might be the factor. So then I started paying attention, and what I noticed was that I paid attention to the sun, which, as you can see over there, rising in the east, it's coming up, and as it's coming up, the plants that have more ex exposure to the sun as the sun rises, goes and makes its circuit and comes over, those are the ones that seem to have thrived the most. And the ones that weren't thriving, those had either a building block in it, had another tree block in it, or from the like some of the peripheral trees that you can see back here. Like those trees, like this huge one right here, when the sun gets comes around, when the sun comes around on this over here, where this little weak tree would be getting its sun the most, these trees down here and that massive tree block it so that it actually doesn't get the sun that it would get when um, its fair share or not fair share but its share of sun. Whereas the other tree is exposed to the sun as the sun's rising over here, it's gets it getting its exposure to the sun but by the time it gets over to the over a little bit more over to the, the right a little bit now this tree that's thriving is actually blocking the sun from the tree that's behind it. And so this tree is thriving and that tree isn't. And then when it gets around, it gets blocked over on this side too. So that this tree, which is right next to that tree, getting the same amount of water, generally speaking, and the same soil is looking like this. Because this, this other third, third um, flourishing tree ends up getting very strong and its roots and things like that, like that are able to absorb the, from the um, nutrients and things from the soil greater, and it's able to, uh, you know, take the water and the stuff like that that's in the ground because it had a, a leg up, it's stronger, and this one ends up not being strong enough to do what it needs to do to protect itself. So unless we could bring the sun over to this tree in particular, this tree is this other tree over here is just going to suffer, even though it's got the same soil and the same amount of water. It's the light that's throwing it off. So, prosperity God spell. So, 
I'll be the first to say that I don't, generally speaking, don't get super hyped about prosperity gospel, gospels. And it's not because I think um, that some of the things that they say aren't true, because Christ does say things about living life abundantly. And even though I think he's talking about a different type of abundance um, or, or a different idea of abundance, um, I'm sure that there's some level of material abundance that one could um, manifest or however you want to call it. I don't know the right words. But at any rate, I think that people can have that and there could be nothing wrong with it. But it just is where where's the heart coming from, you know? Um, and <clears throat> talking about prosperity in and of itself or abundance in and of itself, I mean, look at all these, look at these trees, you know, these grasses. Nobody's doing anything to make these things grow. So there is this natural idea, of course, God being all creative, perpetually creative under every circumstance. I agree that 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 lives within us. So, yes, I agree with that, too. Now, do I say, oh, you give this person $1,000 and blah, 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 or whatever like that, and it's going to grow inside of you? Not necessarily, because I don't think that it's based solely on that. I think that if the person within themselves has come to a point and a stage where they are in a giving space and they are aware and conscious of their own pro- their own prosperous being, as far as being a creative being, then they can bring that abundance through within themselves and then they can share that and they might want to say, you know, thank you to whoever for making me aware of that or whatever. I'm not going to get into it too much because it's a very complicated affair. The question that I'm going to pretty much leave us with because I'm not going to make this video too long is instead of saying why do these people preach the prosperity gospel, I'm asking the question, why are people so attracted to it? And I think that the reason why people are attracted to it is because in themselves, they identify with this little teeny tree way more than they identify with that naturally abundant tree. And because they identify with that kind of space and they see themselves that way, the thought that they could be a, a, an abundant being and the thought that they can be powerful and they can bring in money and they can, they can be beautiful no matter what society says. I mean, because you know that most of the people from my summation who are attracted to that gospel are the people who have been told the worst about themselves. And so when they hear that thing like, you're beautiful, or you can be this, and you can be that, for some of those people, it's like the only time they ever heard that in their life, and they're excited about it, and they want, they want it. And they want it so bad. I mean, I grew up in a town, in a place where, you know, we didn't get, like the black people, generally speaking, we didn't get like the, you're going to be great, you know, you're going to be awesome. You know, there was... All sorts of things that made us think otherwise. And it can be very um, great, I guess, to hear, very seductive to hear how awesome you can be, that you're a child of God and this, that, and the other thing. And, um, you know, I can see why people go for that. Personally, I take abundance from a different angle and things like that. But the question, like I said, is why are people attracted to it? And I think that that has nothing to do, like, we create a society where something like those prosperity gospels can thrive because we create a society where people don't know that they're loved and they don't know that they're valued. And so rather than condemn the prosperity gospel people, which, I mean, I'm not going to say that I think some of them are full of crap. Obviously, you know I think that. But at the same time, they're saying things that people want to hear and they're paying them just like you would pay, like when people sing songs you like and they say, oh, I identify with that song. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to buy their album. It's not really any different, so I'm not judging those people. I wouldn't necessarily call it the gospel of Jesus Christ particularly, or at least not the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. I think it might be a part a part of it, of being able to be prosperous and being able to um, have an abundant life from a whole different standpoint. But at the same time, I can understand why there's certain people that are attracted to it. So I'm not going to put them down. What I'm going to say is if you have something against it, then ask the question, what attracts people to do it? And if you feel like you are sharing the love and the truth and you're helping people to see themselves in that beautiful light, then there's no point in wasting our energy condemning the people who put out the prosperity gospel. The point is, we all have it in us to be like that tree right there and that other tree over there. And the difference is the light. It's the light we shine and it's the light we give and it's the light that we're willing to receive. So how much light are you willing to receive and are you willing to grow? Well, that's my little message for today. Hope you got something out of it. It's a little bit off, but the intent is there. Shine.